Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Nate, and welcome back to another weather forecast discussion, this time for February 27th, 2023. Now, I apologize for the very late upload, but I had to help out my uh, my friend. He was storm chasing in Ohio. If you want to see what he got, well, you're in luck. This is what he had. Boop! Mike chased really hard out there today. I'll also put the at to his Twitter right next to the uh, picture that I just showed you. Nice little funnel cloud that he got. So, uh, really interesting stuff there. And I'm glad he got some stuff out in Ohio for today's risk. Now, before we get started with the video, please be sure to hit that like button down below and subscribe if you are new. Uh, we'll talk about yesterday here real quickly, as uh, most of you who are probably watching my videos for the first time have uh, probably came from my live stream that I did last night, which was a massive wind and tornado risk over portions of Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and even in the per uh, portions of Missouri. We have 184 wind reports as well as 12 tornado reports that were from last night of course there is also uh, probably a few more on all spectrums possible within all those areas as well there are still doing surveys damage surveys for the potential of some tornadoes that uh, the national weather service may have forgotten about to report on but it was a pretty extensive risk there yesterday on the 26th where we saw a strong tornado in cherokee a strong tornado over in Norman, and then uh, a serial amount of tornadoes across the board early on in the event, ranging from Kansas to Texas. So uh, really interesting stuff there. But I want to go ahead and move off to real quickly what's happening here today. We have a 2 out of 5 on the severe weather scale here indicated in the yellow and a 1 out of 5 in the dark green. You can see that at the bottom part of your screen as well with the color codes. This is for portions of Ohio still, and uh, this will eventually move off towards the east into the northern panhandle of West Virginia and southwestern Pennsylvania. Not expecting too much after that once those storms uh, move past those areas and cross the Ohio River off into the Appalachians. So uh, you guys should be fine on that aspect. We'll get into a little bit later on in the video the immense risk for severe weather across portions of the extreme southern portions of the uh, Central Plains, as well as Dixie Alley, the uh, deep south over here for portions of Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. And then we also have another lingering risk on Friday. So that one was on Thursday. This one here is on Friday as well, a 15% chance for severe weather over here for portions of the southeast. Now, we'll move over here to the weather models here. We'll look at the NAM 3 kilometer. The timing is above us in Eastern, so if you're in Central, please subtract one hour. And this is your real line of storms that are kind of creating your severe weather issues. Not too many issues, though. Uh, we've had a few wind reports, a few tornado reports, but those tornadoes were very short and brief and relatively weak for that matter, so they were essentially kind of like strong downbursts of gusty winds. Um, but we've got... That continuing to surge on through and then up above over here into the Great Lakes, we also have quite a bit of snow over here. Snow and freezing rain that is possible. That is going to continue to linger on through into these areas and we'll move off into the northeast where we can get practically a good amount of snow and freezing rain uh, right along the border of New York and Pennsylvania and then of course heading off into New England as well. Uh, then. By tomorrow morning, the snow will start to move out away from the Great Lakes. So if you're over here in southern Ontario, you know, like Toronto, you know, Buffalo, London, stuff like that, uh, you know, we're talking that this is going to start to move off out of your area here uh, by Tuesday morning, maybe even Tuesday afternoon. Um, and you'll just start to kind of get a lot of cold air to come in behind it. So a lot of snow over there. When we talk about the snowfall totals here across the area, not too much unless if you're over near the Great Lakes or if you're over here in the higher elevations in New England. So uh, at maximum, we can expect a foot. And uh, at minimum, you can see probably a widespread area of three to five inches of snow, maybe even a little bit less if you're near the outskirts as well. Uh, but if you're over here in like central or southern Wisconsin into a southern uh, Minnesota, central Michigan, uh, Pennsylvania and stuff like that, uh, like Erie, or uh, areas near State College. You guys might get some uh, snow squalls within your area, but not too much even after that. Uh, what really is what you guys can get is the freezing rain. And uh, quite a bit of freezing rain across the board is uh, likely, especially in the higher elevations of the Appalachians up in Pennsylvania. But we also can talk about how uh, Southern Ontario, as well as Central Michigan, 
and uh, much of Wisconsin and eastern Minnesota really gets a lot of that freezing rain. At maximum, I wouldn't be surprised if we got about an inch, but at minimum, I'm thinking about a tenth of an inch to maybe even a quarter of an inch in some areas, but don't be surprised if it's higher than that. So if you're in any of these areas here that are outlined in this pink, it's recommended that you do not travel under any circumstances. All right, let's move off to what's happening later on this week. Uh, here is what we are anticipating is our low pressure system is going to move on through here by Thursday into Friday. Uh, we'll come back over here towards uh, Wednesday into Thursday. Big, massive dip in the jet stream. A lot of very strong wind shear coming in from the southern side, and this wind shear is going to kind of get pulled around it. It'll start to go over onto the right part of the trough, which this is a trough right here. Whenever we get a dip in the jet stream like that, that indeed is a trough. So we got our big trough moving on through, and it's going to start to kind of give way to a bit more of a well-defined low pressure system right over here. And as this trough continues to move off to the east, you can see that by Thursday, the low pressure system is kind of localized over here in the northern panhandle of Texas, which means areas in southern Oklahoma and central Texas could probably see the brunt of this risk, at least according to the Euro model, and I'll talk about that here in a bit. This right here, very strong winds aloft at about 500 millibars, which is six kilometers above ground level, is where a lot of our upper level wind shear from our jet stream is localized. But if we look a little bit further towards the surface, massive area of moisture return is uh, moving on through into these areas of the southern plains as well as the deep south and the southeast. A lot of moisture in place and upwards of about 65 to 70 degree two points, maybe even more than that in some localized areas. So we have a very moist environment out in front of what would look to be a dry line and a cold front that is going to form in central Texas. And you can see uh, as we get closer to that 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock hours, note the sharp gradient of very moist dew points and very dry dew points, which means on one side, you can have severe weather on this line and maybe even out in front of it as well, maybe some prefrontal showers and thunderstorms and supercells. On the back side, very strong gusty winds and dry air could lead to wildfire. So don't be surprised on the back side of this. We're talking northern Mexico into western Texas, as well as southeastern New Mexico. Very similar to what we had yesterday with those wildfires as well. So uh, note that as the trough moves on through, lot of a uh, lot of the dew points start to kind of uh, get evaporated. We start to see it get used up by all these showers and thunderstorms. And uh, once we're talking, uh, you know, Friday night, or actually a Friday afternoon and a Friday night. Here it is again, very similar setup with moisture now returning all the way up into southern Ohio. So essentially we're talking about a giant line of storms ranging from the Ohio River all the way down into Florida. And uh, this is probably going to be another widespread severe weather event here on both of these days. We'll take a look at the relative humidity here because this can kind of tell us as to our heights of our showers and thunderstorms. And why that is important is because if you think about a diagram of a storm, right? So we have our thunderstorm that is right here. We got our bubbly clouds and stuff like that. And then we have our wall cloud. And then let's say it has a little tornado, right? So depending upon the humidity, it can actually determine as to whether or not we can have higher base clouds where basically saying, uh, the cloud, the bottom of the clouds here can actually uh, be higher up in the atmosphere or a lot lower towards the ground, and then you would have your wall cloud next to it. Uh, if you have a higher humidity towards the surface, then that would technically lead to be the case to where you have a lot of moisture, which means uh, it takes a less amount of distance up into the atmosphere for clouds to start to form. And so when we have areas of high humidity here, that means that the cloud base is probably going to be relatively low towards the ground. We're talking half a kilometer or so, uh, more or less, in that area. And so when we see that here with the Euro model, on the northern side here of the dry line, we're talking the Red River and uh, areas of north central Texas, uh, that is where there seems to be a lot of relative humidity. We're also talking about out in front of this into eastern Texas. This would be uh, Tyler, Longview, and all the surrounding areas over there, including College Station, that is where we could probably see a lot of high relative humidity as well, which could uh, give way to some prefrontal showers and thunderstorms, uh, maybe even supercells 
that could try and uh, form out in front of the dry line. So that'll be something that, to watch out for there as well. And then as we progress over into Friday afternoon, you can see very widespread amounts of uh, high humidity here along the dry line, which once again can lead to uh, lower based showers and thunderstorms, uh, which means it's a less distance to travel for a vortex like a tornado to travel down towards the ground. And we'll move off now to the uh, convective available potential energy, our CAPE. It's essentially warm air rising and cold air sinking in the atmosphere. So the greater displacement between those two different air masses can indicate how much energy you have. And we have a plethora of it here on Thursday, over 2,000 joules per kilogram of CAPE in some spots. And, uh, you know, you realistically need 1,500 or more. I've seen it even occur in less to where we have severe weather. As a matter of fact, uh, last night, was a big example of that to where we didn't have a whole lot of uh, convective available potential energy and yet storms still did as much so of course that's a separate situation to what we're dealing with on Thursday but just to kind of give you guys an idea there is uh, quite a bit amount of energy there uh, present on Thursday and then on Friday uh, not as much energy present in the atmosphere there there is some but not as much. We're talking about 1,000 joules per kilogram, maybe even 1,500 joules per kilogram over there in extreme western South Carolina and uh, northern Georgia. So uh, we'll watch out for that. Uh, we'll have actually a, a better idea as to what could happen on Friday here as we get closer to tomorrow, where the uh, model that I was waiting for for this morning will then come out for tomorrow as well. So uh, it's something to kind of note. I'll be uploading videos to today, tomorrow, and Wednesday before eventually we do go live on Thursday. Now, speaking of models, or at least the model that I was waiting for to try and get us a better idea as to what's going to happen on Thursday, uh, this is kind of a model comparison between the Euro model right here and then the North American model, which is this one. Now, the NAM or the North American model has been pretty atrocious, but it kind of still gives us a better idea as to what's going to happen or at least around what is going to happen. And this is our low level jet, 850 millibars or one kilometer above ground level. The Euro depicts our low pressure system over here in Southwestern Oklahoma, whereas the NAM depicts it not only a little bit further west, but a lot more north and west over here in the Southeastern portions of Colorado. Associated with that, you also see how much fuller these orange colors are along, you know, along portions of Texas, uh, Louisiana, southeastern Oklahoma, and Arkansas, whereas the NAM cuts that off right here. We're talking at around noon to 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, and we've got strong, you know, a strong low-level jet right here um, across the dry line. Then we have a huge gap in the middle, and then out in front of this, we have a pretty strong low-level jet right over here in eastern Texas. So that's kind of the reason why if the NAM model is true, if this uh, depiction of what's going to happen on Thursday comes into fruition. That's kind of the reason why I'm saying, hey, we probably could see some prefrontal showers and thunderstorms over here in eastern Texas, but we also are going to see stuff along the dry line. And then in between that, uh, it'll be a lull period until about the late afternoon, the early evening, when it'll start to move into Dallas. Whereas if the Euro is correct, then still we've got some pretty widespread severe weather that could definitely be possible within these areas. But uh, still something to note there, with the NAM and the Euro. Uh, there's one other thing that um, could also be a fail mode, but I would have to wait until tomorrow for me to see if that actually could come into fruition. If that is, I'll be able to tell you guys as to what could be going on then. But regardless, we've got a lot of showers and thunderstorms that are probably gonna move on through this area. This is gonna be a widespread event here on Thursday. You can see here in the afternoon, a lot of showers and thunderstorms form over here along the northern portions of Texas, according to the Euro model. This is also when the line is going to start to form. Now, however far this line extends down to the south, all these thunderstorms will have the potential to try and be tornadic. So if you are along this line here, or if you see this line push on through, realize that you guys have a chance to see a supercell that could either give out strong damaging winds, large hail, maybe even a couple of tornadoes. But you also see as we get into the afternoon and evening, Look at these showers and thunderstorms over here in northeastern Texas. They're way out in front of the line, but they're riding along that big area of that low-level jet that's in eastern Texas that I mentioned earlier. 
So something to note, if storms form in those areas, those ones can even be significant as well. They would head off to Shreveport and Southern Arkansas, whereas the dry line becomes quite massive. That also might be a more of a strong damaging wind threat as you progress into the evening and overnight hours. So definitely something to keep in mind with all that. And then of course you can see how the line continues to progress even well overnight towards midnight and then it'll start to kind of dissipate heading into Friday morning. And as we get over into Friday late morning into the early afternoon, you can see showers and thunderstorms begin to start to fire back up again. Very much so expansive, ranging from the Ohio River down to Florida. That'll continue to linger all the way through into the late evening before showers and thunderstorms finally move offshore well after 9 to 10 p.m. So that's kind of the general gist as to what could be happening there on thursday and friday we'll go a bit more in depth tomorrow with some fail modes as well as the potential outcomes of what could be happening there thank you guys so much for watching if you did enjoy the video please be sure to leave a like subscribe if you're new turn on notifications share this with friends and family and on social media also follow me on social media link will be in the description down below stay safe everyone and i will catch you guys tomorrow peace out